Take a voice, any voice, in any language. Mix it together with a bit of machine learning hocus pocus and what do you get? Well, hopefully you've already guessed it from the thumbnail, but in case not, what you get is an AI which not only sounds like that voice, but can also speak any language. Plus, it goes a little bit further too, as it can also carry any of the subtle inflections and tone to actually make that voice sing. For example, here is a quick audio clip of a song in French, which I have downloaded from Pixabay. Au oh, Britannia, ma jolie Bretagne, je te dédie cette petite chanson. And now here is that very same song, only this time I'm the lead singer. Au oh, Britannia, ma jolie Bretagne, je te dédie cette petite chanson. Pretty awesome, huh? So what is this sorcery, you may be asking? How can I do this myself? Well, as is the way of the nerd, I'll be doing it all for free on my local computer, just like you can too, so long as you've got a reasonable graphics card and either Linux or Microsoft Windows. The sorcery is all down to this, the Sovitz singing voice conversion fork over on GitHub. This is a fork of the Sovitz SVC, but with a few quality of life changes, as you can see listed on their page there. This software has been through a few versions now, but this particular one seems to be one of the easiest to run. I'll be going through the full process of installation, training and inference, including how you can easily remix a song, just like the Pixabay license says Says there, do make sure you have any required usage rights for the audio that you're going to use. This being the case, I'm going to use my own voice to make a data set for training, and as you've seen, that example song has a license which allows remixing and such. As an alternative to running locally, you could also use the Google Colab via the link provided on the GitHub page there. That way you don't need to have a nice computer with a GPU at home, as you can use this one provided by Google. Everything is in there, it will set everything up for you. If you have a data set, you can upload it and put it in there. If you don't have a data set, it will download one for you. Just remember to uncomment those if you do want to download that already made data set, and then just run the cells in order. But of course, as always, I will be installing this locally, so let's get back to installing this Python app. Whenever I install any new Python app, I like to make a new environment for it. This keeps it in its own little Python house, so to speak, so we don't get any issues with dependencies, Python versions, or whatnot. I use Anaconda, you could also use Miniconda, so do download and install one of those two first. In my Anaconda prompt there, I'm just going to create a brand new environment. I've called it Sovitz Fork New because I am exceptionally good at names. That will take a few seconds to go through. And once it has done its thing, remember to Conda activate your new environment. With its new house all made and activated, now I can run that to command install. I've got an NVIDIA GPU, so the install given there is absolutely fine for me. I don't have an AMD card to test with, but if you do have an AMD card, that Torch install line is ever so slightly different. So you can go over to the PyTorch, get installed, start locally website there, and as you can see, Linux pip rock m, so use that line if you've got an AMD card, and do let me know if it works. After you've installed the version of PyTorch that's correct for you, then you just need to install this Sovitz fork, just like it says there, pip install minus u. You click that, that will go through and install the application for you. And that's it, it's done. You're all installed and ready to start training. If you want to completely skip the training step, there are some pre-trained models available on Hugging Face, but of course, if you want to train your own generator, you're going to need a bunch of samples. One of the easiest ways is just to record your own voice and split it up into chunks, which are roughly 10 seconds long each. One way you can do that is with Audacity. Just record yourself there, and you've got an easy data set. How much audio do you need? Well, that is a good question. I've done a few tests and basically I'd say the more the merrier. I went with 200 samples for my own voice, most of them, as I say, between 5 and 10 seconds long, 50 of them were singing samples and 150 of them just speaking. If you aim for at least 5 minutes of audio in total, then you're probably good to go, but as I say, more is generally better. 
When I was recording my voice, I found it helped to have something to read and hear as an example of some phonetically balanced sentences, as it says up there from the IEEE recommended practice for speech quality measurements. So I just read all those out and that was quite good. If you do something like that, then you'll have to split it up and you may be looking for something to do that automatically. Here is Audio Slicer. Once again, you can simply make a new Conda environment for that with the Conda Create, just like we did for the app originally and download and install that Audio Slicer. Before you run it, you will need to edit the input file and output file, just like I've got there. So input file, I am using my big data set there and I'm outputting it to a special directory so that when you run it, it will split up all that audio into lots of nice chunks. As you can see there, it split it out into various WAV files, which is handy because that's exactly what this program needs. Don't use MP3s. Do remember to save all your audio as WAVs. You can, of course, do it by hand or use any other method you like to break it up into roughly 10 second samples. Once you do have all your audio files, you're just about ready to start the training process. As it says there, you'll need to put them into dataset raw, speaker ID, WAV file, WAV file, any format. A little bit confusing that, so let's just show you here. So there it is, dataset raw, nerd, and then those are all my samples. So it doesn't matter that they're in different directories there. So I've got 50 singing, 100 of me speaking, and some that I tested with Audio Slicer. So all in all there, I've got 200 samples in the dataset raw directory. All you need to do then is run the four commands as shown on the screen there in that order. So you do the resample, that will resample your data and make a new dataset directory. So that dataset raw will then become dataset, 44k nerd and you'll have all your samples in that one directory. The next command is the pre-config one that will create a config file for you there in configs 44k config.json and we'll be editing that in a moment. Now training can take quite a while to run however once it's done you can keep using that generator over and over and it just takes a few seconds per song. You can even run it in real time just like it says here. However, before you do run that final command, like it says in the notes there, there are a few things that you may want to change in that plain text config file. The main items you want to have a look at here are the log interval, and that's basically how often do you want the loss printed on the screen during your training. The eval interval, how often do you want the progress to be saved, it's about one gig each time it saves. Epochs, that's how long you're going to train for, and batch size is how much you're going to process at once. It says the default batch size needs around 14 gig, so you should decrease that batch size if you have less, or like I have, increase it if you have more VRAM. Now, one thing to note is that both log and the eval intervals are in steps, not epochs. For example, with 200 samples and a batch size of 20, a single epoch will take 10 steps to go through all of those samples. So if you did 100 epochs, that's actually going to be 1000 steps. If you set eval interval to 1000, you should get just one model saved. Do note, however, that you should actually add one to the epoch value to ensure that that final step is actually saved. While the defaults are probably fine for most people, that 10,000 epochs will take many, many hours, especially if you've got a huge number of samples. If you do need to stop training for any reason, then don't worry. When you run the train command again, it will just carry on from the last checkpoint it saved. With this being the case, you may wish to train for around 20,000 steps in total and see how that sounds, as you can just carry on training if you're not happy. And with any changes made to that configuration file, you are then ready to start the training. Okay, so let's just run those four commands in order to show you what it looks like. There it is, SVC pre-sample. That goes through that 200 sample data set I have and creates the data set directory. Then when I run SVC pre-config, that will take all those various file names that it's just created and create a config file for you. 
There it is, SVC pre-config. Some of the files it doesn't like because I've got dashes and underscores in there. So you should probably avoid those in your data set. Pre-Hubert does take a few seconds to run. So generally speaking, while that Hubert is running, that's when I go and have a look at the config file. There we go, if I reload it, that's the default. As you can see, we've got 10,000 epochs, log interval 200 by default and 800. So those are the things you want to change depending on your data set size and how long you want to train for. And of course, finally, you just run that train command. I'm not going to run it here. As mentioned, it will take several hours to run. Once training has completed, you'll find a number of files in the logs 44k directory. So if we expand those 44k, there we can see lots of files starting with D and a number, and the ones we're really interested in, G with a number. So those are all the different generators. So now you've got a number of options for creation of your audio masterpiece. It could be audio from a song, which is what I'm going to do, or you could take it from a film or whatever audio source you've got, which has a person singing or speaking. For the usage, you've got a couple of options. You've got a graphical interface or a fully functional normal command line. If you have issues with one, then just try the other. I'm going to launch the graphical interface, as it says there, SVCG. While it may look a bit confusing to start with, all you really need to do here is select the generator to use, the model path there, select an audio file, select the octaves, and then press infer. As you saw earlier, I had many of those G files. It should pick the latest one by default, but you can always check in there. So that's G36000 is the one it's using, and that is indeed the last one we've got there. So that should be the best file. Of course, you can use that to pick earlier files as well, and that's how you can figure out if your training is any good and how long you really need to do it for. I've had some data sets that train really quickly, like an hour or so, whereas others seem to do better after seven or eight hours. Now for that input audio path, that's the audio file that you want to transform into your voice, the one that you just trained. It could be someone speaking, but we're going to do singing just like I did at the beginning of the video. If you do have the vocal stem ready to go, of course, you can just pop it straight in there. If not, like I didn't in this particular case, then there are a few applications out there to actually extract vocals from a mixed audio track. One of my old favorites is Splitter. I've been using this for quite a while now, and it does a pretty good quality audio separation. You can split it into two, three, four, five stems, and it is really easy to install. It's got the quick start there. So just like we did at the beginning of the video, you can do that Conda Create, Conda Activate, Pip Install, Splitter, and then you are ready to run it. Another option is Demux, which some people say gives you better quality. So do try that as well if you're not happy with Splitter. Again, it's a very similar install. You want to conda create minus minus name Demux, Python 3.10, activate it, and then pip install Demux. And then you can just run Demux, which is the one I'm going to be using in my example here. If you really must have a graphical interface, then there's things like Ultimate Vocal Remover GUI version 5.5. So there's lots of different options that you can have. Just pick the one that you prefer the most. Here I'm just using Demux, exactly as it says on the screen there. Demux minus minus two minus stems equals vocals, and then myfile.mp3. So there it is. I've, I've actually got it saved in a little command there, so I don't have to type two stems each time. And when I run that, that will analyze the audio track and then split out the vocals from it. And there it is, I've got the directory there, separated, HTDmux, French song about Brittany, and I've got no vocals and vocals. Vocals is obviously the one we're interested in here. If we have a quick listen to that, we'll see oh, how Britannia, good a job it's done. Ma jolie Bretagne, je te dédie cette petite chanson. T'es bien monté comme une chaîne de montagne. T'es bien roulé comme une galette au jambon. And that's not too bad. It's a little bit wobbly in some places, and that will affect the final output, but it's not too bad. Okay, so if we go back to that interface, and that's the file I want there, the vocal files. Now, the next thing I need to do is change that pitch. Now, if you've got singing, then don't use auto predict. If you've just got talking, then it is okay to use auto predict F0. There are a number of different methods there as well. You may want to select crepe. Now, as that singer is about the same octave as me, I'm going to set pitch to zero and then press infer, and that will magically create the new audio for me. 
It does just take a few seconds to process and it will finally output in the same directory as the source file. So if I go back there, there it is, vocals.out, there is my newly created file. Okay, let's see what I sound like singing in French without the backing music. Oh, Britannia, my sooty Britannia, shutter duty, said to pretty chanson. Nice, it's me singing in French. So all you need to do then is mix those two tracks back in. Once again, back to Audacity. Let's click that open. There we go, and we'll drag the vocals out. That's me singing, and the original one, the no vocals there. So then we've got the two together, and if we play those... Oh, Britannia, my sooty Britannia, Chateau Diddy, said to pretty chanson. There it is. We have recreated, remixed that song with me singing the lead vocals in French, and it only took a few seconds to press infer. Isn't that like the best voice-to-voice -voice program ever? Can you think of any ways that you could use it? Maybe make your mum sing your national anthem, or perhaps you've always wanted to speak in another language but couldn't be bothered to learn how. Plus, if you liked that, then you may like this too.